extremely excited uh, with the challenges that are in front of us with this group to be back together again. Uh, we've had a great off season. Uh, I think everyone on our roster, when we go through it individually, is significantly better than they were six months ago. And uh, we're really excited to, to see what we, what we can become this season. Good afternoon, Coach. Jay Cashman with WPTV. Thanks for uh, having us here today. Uh, can you go through some of the uh, the mindset with you and your players following the March Madness run, uh, what you all did in, in May and in March, and in the offseason? What went through your minds, and how did you prepare over the offseason for what's to come now this season after what you did last season? Well, the, the crazy thing about last year in general is it happened really fast, and we are so process-oriented that – we're always on to the next thing. And then immediately the season ends, abruptly, obviously, and it's on to the next thing, which is figuring out a way to let's all try to do this again because I think there's such a, a high level of mutual respect of, of care for everyone within the program. So how do we figure out a way to make this the right fit for everyone to come back and do it again? Fortunately, a lot of things came in, you know, it fell into place. And then it becomes what our issue is going to be next year. What do we need to improve on? What are the holes in our roster? What are the holes in our system? And immediately begin trying to fix those things and find out the best way for this next year's team to play. So uh, a lot goes into it, but our guys, that the one thing that, that's been constant is their work ethic and their drive to improve. Hey Coach, what have you seen um, this, between last year and this year now that sort of has given you that confidence? But this is sustainable, that this can, can, do, can be done again. We've seen a lot of teams you know, have a good year, uh, fall off, but what do you see that you feel like is going to be sustainable? Well, when I look in the locker room, I have a high level of confidence that it's going to be a, another really good year. And I was probably as confident last season. I know I went back and, and listened to an interview that just kind of popped up uh, on my computer, and I listened to it just to see what I said a year ago. And because of how hard our guys work, how competitive, what they bring to the table every single day. I had a, a high level of confidence last year. So, you know, obviously that doesn't mean we're gonna win this year, but because of the way we work, compete, and obviously the pieces in our locker room, uh, there's a lot of reasons to be excited and confident. Coach, you mentioned um, everyone has improved. Is there someone that stands out to you that's really been in the gym all summer and worked on their game? And it's, it's day by day. There's several guys that, that I could point to and say, man, they are a lot better than last year. And if they were on our, our teams in year one and year two, they would be uh, scoring this many points or they would be the go-to guy or they would be this or that. Uh, but that's the beauty of this team. We have so many different pieces, so many different weapons, and everyone's going to want a little bit more. It's human nature. The only thing we can count on is, is being a big game and, and all of us having to sacrifice a little bit more for the team because we have a lot of guys who are capable. Coach, um, you know, losing Michael Forrest, like a big hit when it comes to having that vocal leader in the locker room. Who do you see like stepping into that role of being uh, more vocal with, with the teammates and everybody else on the team? Well, that was a beautiful thing about Mike Forrest. He was never a vocal leader, but he was someone from day one that we can always point to and say that's what it looks like. He modeled leadership every single day. So our locker room dynamics haven't changed because our locker room was so strong last year uh, but what we do miss is just Mike's personality his consistent approach and him never being too high or too low he was as even killed of a worker as a player as, as anyone I've ever coached uh, we definitely miss him but it's I think the, the the vocal leadership in our locker room is very similar to what it was last year Coach, a, a top 10 preseason ranking for you guys, the first time in school history. Just kind of talk about the recognition nationwide for you guys. Is this showing that FAU is a team to be reckoned with? Well, our goal is to is to be as consistent as, as we can possibly be. And, and obviously the national recognition is nice. It doesn't mean anything once the ball's tipped, but it does help with ticket sales. It helps with... Uh, putting these guys on a bigger stage. So there's a lot of good things. I'm not going to say it doesn't matter because it does matter. And I would love to be ranked number one in the country every single year because that, that shows the level of respect people have for the guys in our locker room. Uh, but once the, once the, the ball's thrown up, it's going to be it's going to come down to us playing good team basketball again and, and doing what we do. You got two new kids on the block with Devin Vanderpool and Jaquel Powell coming onto this team. What, what type of role do you see them playing onto this year's squad? It's too early to tell. Obviously, they're four years, three years younger than a lot of players on our team, so they're going to be trying to carve out uh, a role for themselves, and it's difficult to find a way to fit in and also contribute uh, while learning the college game. I'm just fortunate that we, we don't have to count on freshmen like we used to 
to determine our wins and losses. Hopefully they, they uh, get to the level where they, they can help us win and they have a, a big role. But uh, I know in, in the first couple of years we were counting on new guys to come in and it's, it's a different ball game when, when you start comparing high school to college with, with what it takes to win at this level. So uh, uh, fortunately for them, they have great leaders in front of them that, that model the behavior they need to follow every day. I know what you guys kind of what you did was unprecedented, but have you been able to look back in history and see something that you could pull from another team, maybe from another program that you could kind of talk to your guys and say, hey, you know, this team, this program did this, and it's kind of similar to what we're trying to do this year? Well, for me and the staff, the best thing about the run is the, the I guess, the avenues that we that become available to us to learn from the, the greatest that have ever done it. So we've spoken with, with several other coaches who have been in these similar situations that are trying to repeat or just uh, follow a magical season and anticipate what your issues are going to be. And, and most of them are human nature. Uh, but they do change team to team because every team has a, a different cast of characters or personalities. But yeah, we've reached out to several people and, and gotten great advice on, on what to expect and, and how to handle those things in the best way. Coach, how deep do you expect that rotation to be early on in the season? Building our Pritchard's question, do you believe any of the young guys will be chance to carve out some minutes? If the season started this minute, our rotation would be too big. Um, and that's <laughs> that's going to be a challenge, and it's, it's a good problem. Um, because it, it's not as if in, in the first couple of years we had too big of a rotation, but it was more of, of us trying to figure out who we're going to play. And we needed to see some guys in games to see what they look like. Now uh, we, we can overcome injuries. We can overcome a lot of foul trouble. We can overcome a lot of things because uh, we have a <laughs> – we have a lot of confidence in 16 guys on our roster. But right now, our, our rotation would be a little bit too big. That's going to be the challenge. Hopefully, we stay healthy all year like we, had, like we did most of the last season, so it, it becomes an issue. But, um, you know, we're trying to play a little bit faster. We're trying to generate a few more possessions. We're trying to exert more energy in every facet to, I guess, um, give us the, the best chance to, to utilize our, our personnel. What are some areas that you're focusing on improving that might have held you back from reaching the national championship last season? Well, that's, that's a tough question because probably what kept us from playing one more game wasn't the things we needed to improve on the most. Our late clock offensive production wasn't great. Our baseline out-of-bounds defense wasn't great. It's the, the micro of the game, um, and we're always trying to get better while also maintaining the, the high-level success and the things we're good at. So there's a lot we're, that, we've, that we've worked on we're trying to improve. Obviously, you're always trying to get better at not turning the ball over, at forcing turnovers, the turnover battle, the possessions battle. Um, I think all of us coaches are, are searching for the same thing, and, and fortunately for us last year, we went from 13th in the league to number one in the league in turnover uh, in turnover percentage, so that would be something that we, we're focused on. But there's, there's all types of, of, of scenarios and things we're trying to improve at, but most importantly, uh, late clock offense is the one area that we were as inefficient as, as any other. Coach, what, what was your last question? What's your philosophy? Last question. What was your philosophy in putting together a a non-conference schedule, what objectives do you have in mind? Was there a point that there was a point of diminishing returns and toughening up the schedule, and how do you think you balanced it? Well, we felt a responsibility to play as many big games, high-profile television games against Power 5 opponents that would play us. Uh, we've tried to, to schedule a lot of these games in the past, and, and we didn't have that opportunity. So. Uh, it, it would have been irresponsible of us to finally have the opportunity and to pass on any of them. It put us in a, in a quandary where we had to um, move other games, move them back a year, cancel, get canceled, whatever the case, in order to fill our schedule with these high-profile games. And, and we did it because we want our guys to be on the biggest stage competing against the best night in, night out. And uh, we, we have a lot of confidence going forward after having done that. I have a question for all three of you, if you could just collectively answer it. What does it mean for you as leaders of this team this year after what happened last year to come into this year? What is it going to take to do a repeat? And in your mindset, uh, what does it mean for you to carry this team into the future for this year? I think for all of us, uh, we can agree that it just starts in practice with our, our daily approach. Um, it's obviously trying to raise the standard that we set for this team last year. Just continue to try to raise it this year and um, that just goes with everybody being bought into the system everybody being bought into the overall goal that we have of just winning and uh, we believe honestly that we prepare for April and March right now and we build those habits right now so just um, to harp on what I said just a, a daily approach to try to be good every single day
Uh, Brian, what uh, what improvements are you working on improving in your game heading into this upcoming season? I would say my efficiency, um, mm -hmm. scoring the ball, being more efficient doing that. Um, obviously being able to shoot off the dribble a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to personally be able to just guard the ball 94 feet, so work on uh, my, my conditioning and being more, honestly, whatever, like being more bought into to do whatever it takes to win. But I guess those things, personally, I've been trying to work on. And you as a, as a senior now, no excuse me, Brian would also like to improve his assist to turnover ratio. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. You as a senior now, you guys lost uh, Mike. I believe you guys are seniors on the, the, the team now. Uh, but you graduated now, and you kind of like the, the old head on the team now. Have you embraced that role? Do you feel like you, you're, you're in a different role now that you were last year? Uh, I would say I feel more inclined, definitely, to be more of a vocal leader. I think that's something personally that I, I, I've struggled with in the past. and. I've been trying to address more this year, so it's being more of a vocal leader. Brian, to pull off this question, um, how have you personally, or really any of the guys on stage, taken a mentor role for some of the guys on the team? That's a good question. I would say probably for the younger guys, just holding ourselves more accountable to what we do in practice. Obviously, there's <laughs> things that we already know and sometimes like we have to set the standard and we can't you know give them a, a bad example of what to look at in practice we got to respond the right way whenever we are you know someone tells us something to criticize us in a, in a positive way so it's holding ourselves more accountable and being more willing to to be a vocal leader kind of teach guys when they need it for brandon um last year when you when you came in man and, and got some we're getting your minutes. You were kind of that boost, that spark plug off the bench sometimes, and gave the team a little, little edge, a little energy defensively. That's something that you that you thought about um, last year, and something you want to bring to this year, giving the team that little, that little edge and you know, fire that they sometimes need off the bench. Uh, most definitely, um, I just be ready with my name call. And I'm just about winning. Whatever the team need me to do at the moment, I'm down to do it. Even if it's defending, rebounding, also running the floor to get somebody a wide open shot. I'm just. Take, doing whatever it takes to win. Guys, the Jimmy V Classic's coming up in December, and you guys go back to Madison Square Garden. You know, are you guys going to take a moment and kind of reminisce about you know punching your ticket to the Final Four, or is it strictly business because you guys do have two top 25 teams that you guys will be playing? Um, I'm going to say um, strictly business, um, taking it one game at a time, frame by frame, not thinking of too much ahead. You know, um, just taking it one game at a time. Whoever the next team got to. In front of us, that's what we worry about. We're not worried about two months from from now. We worry about the next game. Um, yeah. You know, last season there wasn't like a lot of expectations. This year, it's the complete opposite. Going from the hunter to now the hunted, with a lot of teams looking to get a win against you on their schedule. What's it going to take to make sure you stay the course and get and be as successful as possible in this upcoming season? Um, our expectations haven't changed. Um, mm -hmm. I think we go into every game with scout and uh, very detailed and uh, try to do the little things, uh, get on the glass, play hard, um, make shots. When the shots don't go in, the little things is what matter. Uh, so I think just harping on those things uh, every day in practice is what will get us there. Jalen, real quick, as I asked you know, before, what does it mean for you to be a leader on this team this year after the record performance last year? And what's your mindset as you go into this year? Uh, yeah, um, same with uh, what Brian said, uh, just coming more of a vocal leader, talking more on the floor, um, helping young guys out. Uh, us both just being point guards on the floor, being the team, being the coach on the floor would definitely help out uh, the rest of the guys. And, uh, especially when, um, when the lights are bright, there's a lot of people in the crowd, a lot of yelling, a lot of cheering. Um, we're going to need those, need us like, on the floor talking with, it, uh, with our team. Last question, and then we'll break out into individual requests. Hey, Coach, real quick, um, kind of off the court, 
um, you know the, the success you've had and the, the financial boost the program has had. Some of the changes that we're seeing now are a lot. I don't know if one has to do with the other, but how much of that success uh, has to do with what we're seeing as far as the improvements to the arena and I'm um, hoping that we'll keep this building packed this year. Well, as far as the impact, I think we're really close to selling out every season ticket. <laughs> and I think if anyone was at our games the last seven or eight games this season, what a crazy home court environment that, that has been created here by a lot of people, our marketing, our administration, most importantly, our players. Uh, but the city, the local community got behind our guys. And, and I haven't been in very many environments that were better than that last game, home game against UTEP. Um, at you know, especially in South Florida, where we have a lot to compete with, is a testament to how our guys play. Um, it's an honor being on the stage, especially with these three guys, because they probably sacrifice and give up as much as any any three guys I've ever been around, and I've been doing this 20 plus years. So, um, very proud of, of the direction we're going in. As far as the improvements, these are, have been on the table, but obviously with the success that we had, everything gets sped up a little bit, uh, and, and hopefully they'll continue to be sped up because we continue uh, with the upper trajectory. Thank you. Coach Dusty.